This episode of HCC 788 brought to you in part by the Diecast Enterprise. Join us each week as we discuss the sexual proclivities of Commander William T. Riker, the bravado comedy of Lieutenant Worf, and the adorable monkey shines of one Wesley the Sweater Crusher. Or maybe we'll just talk about the Golden Girls. Or hairstyles. Or cartoons. That's equally likely. We also like G.I. Joe. There, we tied that in nicely. Well done, everyone, on that. Buy all our play sets and toys. I gave myself a Marine Corps tattoo, just like Gung Ho! You did what? I gave myself a tattoo! It's perfect! A real tattoo? Yes! It hurt like hell, but it's totally worth it! You did this to yourself? Yes. Did you do this in front of a mirror? Yes. Great action figure, so great top tier, love G.I. Joe. Great! I'm in hell! Slaughter Rising! Sarge, Sarge! Wait a minute. Ready! 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 Silence kill. Everybody, Huda Cobra Commander 788 here. It's time for another vintage G.I. Joe toy review, and this one is special. This is the first review on this channel that was chosen by patrons. All supporters on Patreon were able to vote to decide what review we would see this week, and they chose a fresh review of Gung Ho. This is something new and exciting I'm doing on this channel. I've never done this before. I'm kind of turning the reins over to viewers to decide what will be reviewed. And if you want in on this action, just hit me up on Patreon. Support at any level gets you a vote. And I'm gonna do several more of these throughout the year. I have reviewed Gung Ho before, but like the Dragonfly review, it was one of the first videos that I uploaded on this channel and it's pretty rough, so it deserves a second try. So I'm happy the patrons chose Gung Ho. I hope you like it too. For this review, I have a special guest who insists on being here, whether I think it's a good idea or not. So please welcome Sergeant Really Mean. Thank you, Commander. Ladies and ladies, my name is Sergeant Really Mean, and I have heard all the jokes about my name before, so please forgive me if I do not laugh at your witticisms. I will be your drill instructor for the afternoon. I sincerely hope that the experience is pure hell. Some of you out there got to choose this review. You said, I want to see that. Well, news flash for ya. If you think Sergeant Really Mean stays up late at night worrying what you precious snowflakes want, you are mistaken. If every single one of you doesn't shape up right now, you will end up exactly like me. I am 47 years old. I am thrice divorced. I suffer from irritable bowel syndrome, and I live in a Jeep down by the latrine. <laughs> Well, Commander, this looks like the sorriest collection of dog snot I've ever seen in my life! Uh, Sergeant? There's someone here to see you. Oh, sh I'm out of here. Thanks, Sarge. Ah, bite me! Back at you. The supporters of this channel and HCT 788 present G.I. Joe's first Marine, Gung Ho. 
This is Gung Ho, G.I. Joe's Marine from 1983. He was first available in 1983 and was also available in 1984 and 1985. He was discontinued for the year 1986. There was a new Marine in 1986, Leatherneck. G.I. Joe had other Marines throughout the years, including Sergeant Slaughter and Mainframe. Gung Ho was the first. There were later versions of Gung Ho in the vintage line. The 1987 version 2 was in his dress blues. The 1992 version 3 included Extra America. Uh, there were two versions of Gung Ho in 1993. Version 4 was very similar to this version 3, and version 5 was in the Mega Marines subline. The designer of this figure, Ron Rudat, who worked for Hasbro, was inspired by his father, who was a Marine. As has become a tradition on this channel, every time I mention Ron Rudat, I want to thank him for all of his hard work on G.I. Joe, so thank you, Ron. Gung Ho is an English term meaning overzealous or enthusiastic. It is based on a Chinese term that refers to industrial cooperatives. The Americanized version of the term doesn't really reflect the meaning in the original language. The Chinese characters that make up the word translate literally to work together. The term was adapted by Major Evans Carlson for the U.S. Marine Corps. Gung Ho was the title of a 1943 movie about Carlson's Macon Island Raiders. The movie starred Randolph Scott. I discovered the movie as a kid, and it helped cement my love of Gung Ho and my fascination with the Marines. Gung Ho was also the name of a 1986 movie starring Michael Keaton. It's a pretty good movie, but it has no relation to the Marines. The Marines are known for their motto, Semper Fidelis, sometimes shortened to Semper Fi. It's a Latin phrase that means always faithful or always loyal. Let's take a look at his accessories, starting with his weapons, and the contents of the card on which the figure was packaged call this an XM-76 grenade launcher. The grenade launcher has a strap that is very easily broken, especially at the points where it connects to the weapon itself. I do like straps on weapons like this. It gives the figure another way to carry it. This XM-76 grenade launcher is based on the real-world M-76 grenade launcher, which began service in 1961. As you can see, they added some details on Gung Ho's weapons and they added a grip, but otherwise it sticks pretty closely to that real-world M76. This grenade launcher got reused a few times. There was the accessory pack version. This is from the 1984 accessory pack number two. Uh, and it's easy to distinguish this from the original. It's in a much lighter color. It was used for the 1987 mail-away exclusive Starduster, and his was in silver plastic. On the 1984 Slugger, they used the same mold from Gung Ho's grenade launcher, uh, but they added a barrel and a post, and they turned it into a machine gun. Gung Ho's next accessory is his jungle pack, which is in a light blue color, the same light blue color as his uniform. Uh, it has some detail on there, looks like some straps and an entrenching tool there, a few pockets on the side. Uh, decent detail, but you know, not the most, uh, but it is very large. It, in fact, I think this may be the largest backpack that we got in G.I. Joe uh, through 1983. Comparing this backpack to Airborne's, who also had a pretty big backpack for the era, uh, Gung Ho's backpack is still a little bit bigger. One thing I like in a backpack is when you can see the backpack from the front of the figure. Some G.I. Joe backpacks are so small that facing the front of the figure, you can't even tell that he's wearing one. But on this one, you can definitely see the backpack when Gung Ho is facing you. That's good. One thing that I don't like, though, is that there are no uh, sculpted straps or anything on the figure that the backpack would attach to. Let's look at the articulation on Gung Ho. He had the standard articulation for G.I. Joe figures of 1983, meaning he could turn his head from left to right. Uh, the heads were not on ball joints at that time. He could swing his arm up at the shoulder and swivel at the shoulder all the way around. He had a hinge at the elbow. He could move at the elbow about 90 degrees. He had a swivel at the bicep. He could swivel his arm all the way around. Uh, the figure was held together with a rubber O-ring that looped around the inside, so he could move at the torso a bit. He could move his legs apart about so far. He could bend his leg at the hip about 90 degrees and bend at the knee about 90 degrees. Let's look at the sculpt design and color of Gung Ho and let's go ahead and talk about this color scheme. He is wearing mostly light blue and this is something I always struggled with as a kid. Even though I loved this figure and this character, the light blue always struck me as a bit weak uh, and now I've warmed to it a bit now. I appreciate it a bit more now as an adult collector, uh, but even so, I think I would like to see this figure in green rather than this 
this light blue. This light blue is susceptible to yellowing, which will turn it green over time. Let's look at Gung Ho's head, and on his head he has a green cap. This is a Marine Corps utility cover in olive drab, and it has on the front a sculpted, it looks like an anchor rather than a Marine Corps emblem. And I have to assume this is because this uh, it was just too difficult to get that level of detail in this scale uh, to sculpt the actual Marine Corps emblem on there. Uh, on Leatherneck's cap, however, they just kind of scaled it up a bit uh, so you could get that detail on there. Under that cap, he has a bald head, and he also has a pretty powerful mustache. Now let's look at the chest. This is where things really get interesting. He's wearing that light blue vest with some detail, front and back. Uh, the vest is open, so you can see his bare chest. Uh, he has a couple green grenades, and then on his chest, very prominently, right there in front, uh, he has a tattoo, and this tattoo is the EGA, or the Eagle Ball and Anchor. This is the Marine Corps emblem. It's not an exact copy of the Marine Corps emblem. It is altered slightly to avoid any copyright complaints. His arms are bare and average size, although the character of a gung-ho, I think, is supposed to be exceptionally muscular and bulky. The figure doesn't quite come out that way. Uh, there is a green watch on his left wrist. On his waist, we can see he's wearing light blue trousers with a green camouflage pattern. Uh, he has a belt with a crosshatch pattern, a couple small pouches on the sides, and a gray belt buckle. This waist piece was reused for some versions of Steel Brigade. His legs continue that light blue and green camouflage pattern. Uh, on his right thigh, he has a holster with a black pistol. On his left thigh, he has grenades for his grenade launcher in gray. And I really like this when the sculpting on the figure matches up with the accessories. I think that is exceptional, very well done. Finally, he has some gray boots, and there is a knife on his left boot. These boots got reused for Duke. Same lower legs, just different colors. Let's take a look at Gung Ho's file card, and his file card had his faction as G.I. Joe. It has an excellent portrait of Gung Ho here. Now, this is really great artwork. It's one of my favorites. He's the Marine, and his code name is Gung Ho. His file name is Etienne R. Lafitte, and his first name is probably taken from Saint Etienne, which is a city in France. His last name, Lafitte, is probably taken from Jean Lafitte, a French pirate who was based in Louisiana, which incidentally is also where Gung Ho is from. His primary military specialty is Recondo, and Recondo is a combination of two words, reconnaissance and commando. Secondary military specialty, jungle warfare, although he is not camouflaged for the jungle. He's also a training instructor. As a jungle warfare specialist, he shares a job with G.I. Joe's first designated jungle trooper, Recondo, from 1984. And Recondo also has a pretty wicked mustache. As a training instructor, Gung Ho could fill the role of another one of G.I. Joe's Marines, Sergeant Slaughter. His birthplace is Ferdelance, Louisiana, and this is a fictional town. Most G.I. Joe file cards use real locations for birthplaces. This is a rare fictional place name. As to where this Ferdelance name could come from, well, Ferdelance is the name of a snake. It's also the name of a 1974 TV movie. I haven't seen that movie, but I've read the description, and it sounds like a really weird movie. The best I could describe it is Snakes on a Submarine. This paragraph says, Born into a large back swamp Cajun clan, Gung Ho moved to New Orleans and won a reputation as a bare-knuckle brawler and a knife fighter to be reckoned with. Cajun refers to a French-speaking ethnic group in Louisiana. They're descendants of Acadian exiles. When I think of Cajun, I think of Justin Wilson. And he got squirrel tucked under his belt with the tail hanging down. Looked like he got a hula skirt on. Got about 16 or 15 squirrel in the limit, 14. I only understood about half of that. Wait just one minute, Commander. Are you telling me that Gung Ho comes from a family of Frenchies? Lordy frickin' doll! Why don't we all sit down to a nice brunch of snails, frog legs, and surrender? <laughs> uh, Sergeant, there's someone here to see you. John, I can't stood that. I'm hiding. 
Apparently, he was a bare-knuckle brawler and a knife fighter as a teenager because the next line says he joined the Marines at 18 and graduated top of class from boot camp at Paris Island. He attended Airborne School, Recondo School, and Marine Ordnance School. I'm pretty sure Airborne School and Recondo School are Army references. Qualified expert all NATO infantry small arms and most Warsaw Pact infantry weapons, XM-76 grenade launcher. This bottom paragraph has a quote, and it actually says who it's quoting for a change. Zap says, all Marines are crazy, but Gung Ho is the hairiest, scariest, craziest jarhead that ever scratched, kicked, and bit his way out of that hole in the swamp they call Paris Island. Gung Ho was pretty well used in G.I. Joe media. In the cartoon series, he first appeared in the miniseries A Real American Hero, and in that series, he seemed to have an unnatural attachment to his rifle. He had a substantial number of appearances in the G.I. Joe animated series thereafter. In one episode, episode, the Baroness attempts to harass Gung Ho's family, but she learns not to mess with Cajuns. In the G.I. Joe comic book series, Gung Ho first appeared in issue number 11, along with a lot of other Joes from the class of 1983. He had a few appearances immediately after his introduction, and he continued to appear periodically throughout the series. One of my favorite Gung Ho appearances was in issue number 39. I think his banter with Roadblock was some top-notch writing. Look Looking at this figure overall, Gung Ho does go in the top tier, but just barely. For a figure that I loved so much, it only just escapes the middle tier. That light blue color scheme is a bit weak for a character as strong as Gung Ho. That's my biggest problem with it. The figure is saved by excellent sculpting, a bold design, that chest tattoo, and his distinctive hat. I've told this story before, and it bears repeating here, that as a child, I loved Gung Ho. Stalker was and is my favorite G.I. Joe character. He was a much more fleshed out character in the comic book, but Gung Ho sparked a fascination with the Marine Corps. At some point in my childhood, I discovered the 1943 movie titled Gung Ho. I got it on VHS cassette somewhere, and I must have worn that tape out. I watched it so much. I was so infatuated with the character of Gung Ho and the mystique of the Marine Corps that I saved my pennies and I went to an Army Navy surplus store and I got a hat just like Gung Ho's. And I wore it all the time, everywhere. I only took it off for school because they made me. In 1986, when G.I. Joe's new Marine came out, Leatherneck, I exchanged the green hat for a woodland camouflage hat like Leatherneck's, and I wore that thing all the time. I think that was during the summer. I didn't have school, so I had no reason to take it off. My parents kept telling me if I didn't take that hat off every once in a while, I would go bald. I still have most of my hair, Mom and Dad. This hat is exactly like my first hat just in a larger size, but it looked exactly like this. As a child, I could wear this hat because it's a bit of fantasy and a little hero worship. As an adult, I can wear this hat as part of a costume for a character, but I would never wear this hat in public. Why? Because I didn't serve, so I didn't earn it. For those of you who did earn it, Semper Fi and thank you for your service. Thank you to my patrons for choosing this review. I hope more of you get in on it. It's going to be a lot of fun. The thumbnail image you see for this video on YouTube was drawn by me and inked and colored by my daughter Victoria. So thank you Victoria for doing that for me. If you would like a sketch by me, just check out Patreon. Don't forget to like this video on YouTube, subscribe to the YouTube channel, like me on Facebook, follow me on Twitter, and share this video to help this channel grow. Don't forget to check out my website, hcc788.com, where you can see this review and all my other G.I. Joe reviews. Thank you for watching. I'll see you next time. And remember, until then, only G.I. Joe is G.I. Joe. They'll fight for freedom wherever there's trouble. G.I. Joe is there. G.I. Joe. Over the attack here, Winter Outpost. Call them the members of the G.I. Joe. And here's Gung Ho, Airborne, Doc, and Snow Job. And every Joe has a two-handed battle grip. Get aboard the Battle Bear. It's G.I. Joe to the rescue. G.I. Joe. We chased off Cobra. Way to go, Joe. G.I. Joe Battle Bear. Joe and Cobra figures each sold separately from Hasbro. Always stay till the end for the Stinger.